Hello. Hi, Barry. Barry, this is Judd. Oh, hi, Judd. How you doing? Barry, it's past midnight. What are you doing in your office? I was just going to leave you a voicemail. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I've just been having some computer problems. Uh, I'm just re-entering some student data. For the transcripts? Those have to be sent out tomorrow. Will they be done in time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm almost finished. Okay. Gee, Barry, don't kill yourself. Well, I was just going to tell you that we're way under budget in dining services here. And I'm planning on... Ah! What was that? Hello? Hello? PC, age 3, controls all student data at Gordon College, class credit, GPA, undergrad and graduate transcripts, even some sort of mandatory chapel attendance requirement database. Last night the computer and the user crashed simultaneously. The user, the dean of students, wakes up 10 minutes later. He's fine. The computer, on the other hand, is not. No prior warning and nothing more than donut stains on the police report. So. Any ideas? Could be Sasser or 32 Blaster. Increased threads would explain their high core temperature. But not the rising chapel credits. Probably some kind of Trojan or cryptoviral extortion attack. It would explain the uncontrollable increase of the chapel credits. We should check for net skein absence and examine the hydrocoptic muscle veins. I think Chase is right. But would it be so bad to require more chapel credits? It would probably do them all some good. Of course. What am I thinking? Who cares if every student wakes up tomorrow with a GPA of 1.2 and no recorded credit for anything? Foreman, go examine the dean's office. I don't trust campus public safety. See what you can find. Chase, re-examine the hardware and ultrasound the core. And Cameron, do a full lab workup. Symantec, Avast, McAfee. And if they don't find something, find something that will. What are you waiting for? Go! Scans were all negative for spyware, malware, and viruses, although there was some inexplicable condensation on the chassis. Sweating? Interesting, but not useful. It had some fragmented sectors on the hard disk, but nothing conclusive. There was a large magnet on the computer desk, and evidence of a power surge. One of the outlets was charred. Normally, if it was electrical, the power supply would be shot, and the dean of students would have more than a sore back. But combined with a strong enough magnet and the right amount of humidity, it could cause something like a seizure. We could run a low-level sector scan with WDB7. But that software is still in its beta stages. We can't use a beta product on something this important. It's just too risky. Mm, no. I like it. Get no R and do the procedure. But we can destroy what's left of the system. Then be extra careful. <sighs> I've got the IV. Okay. Get me two cc's of the anti-inflammatory. And I'll charge the insulator. Teddy's not going to like this when she finds out. That's why he's making us do it. Mouse! What are you doing here? Why are you whispering? Do you have something to tell me? Or are you just attracted to me? Ha ha. Very funny. Listen, 
you've got to be careful with this computer. The owners donate the hospital a lot of money. Without them, you wouldn't be here. And would that be such a bad thing? I'm not going to take this. You're on clinic duty in exam room too. Oh no, I'm much too busy saving lives in my office. You aren't saving anyone except for the girl in exam room too. Get to it. Yes, mommy. And can I go out and play? So, what's wrong with you? My computer doesn't work. <laughs> really? I've heard of this problem before. They wrote about it in last month's Journal of Computing Medicine. Really? It worked just the other day. Hmm. Well, have you taken it through any radioactive minefields recently? No. Well, do you think anyone else may have taken it through radioactive minefields? I don't think so. Well, you're definitely missing something there. You mean this? Actually, I was referring to your head. I never use it. My laptop's much lighter without it. I mean, it works fine when it's plugged in, but whenever I try to use it somewhere else, it doesn't even light up. That thing is called a battery. If you had anything besides a cold living inside your head, you would know... Just put the battery in. Stop the surgery. What's going on? It's not a power failure. What do you mean? It has to be. No, it's a virus. But we ruled that out already. All the functions aren't completely normal. All the software tested normal. Nothing's infected. That's because it's not in the software. It's a rhino virus. That's impossible. Computers can't catch colds. No, they can't. But people can. What are the symptoms? Mucus, slow breathing, coughing. Upset stomach, dizziness, lightheadedness. That would explain the high core temperature and the sweatiness. You can't touch that without gloves! Oh really? You mean like this? What does any of this have to do with the computer? A computer can't grow living bacteria. The conditions are too extreme. Too much heat, not enough moisture. But what if something got into the computer? Something the virus could live off of? Like a piece of undercooked barbecue pizza. That's why you shouldn't eat with your fingers. Or just wipe with your hand. No, same principle applies either way. So how are you planning on removing the virus? You have to physically remove it. But it could get very complicated, depending on how far it spread. The MRIs and the x-rays didn't show any deterioration on any of the components. Which means the virus could only be in one place. The hard drive. Well, it's a good thing I have this, then. Perfect. I'm going home early. That's it? That's all you had to do? We've been here for three hours, and you fix it in two minutes? That's why I have an office. Check the data and make sure Jack and Jill still have their perfect 4.0s, put the computer back where it belongs. I'm going home. When you get what you want, but not what you need. When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep. Stuck in rivers. Lights will guide. Officer? Hey, stop putting citations on my car. I am the president, you know. <laughs> they see me mowing my front lawn. I know they're all thinking I'm so white and nerdy. I'm too white and nerdy. It's hard. <laughs> now when I take it places, it won't turn on. <laughs> I told you that was going to happen. <laughs> like a pepperoni, anchi, anchovy, snot, four cheese, <laughs> pizza. <laughs> That'd be a really funny blooper too, actually.
this isn't fixed scoon. Scoon. <laughs> this isn't fixed scoon. This isn't fixed scoon. This isn't fixed scoon. Soon. Wow. Okay. T Barry, don't kill yourself. Well, I make all of my business calls after nine, you know. With sprints, free nights, and weekends, I save the college a lot of money. Plus, I never have to talk to anybody. Look at me and white and nerdy. I'd like to roll with the gangsters. Although it's apparent I'm too white and nerdy. I'm just too white and nerdy. I think I'm just too white and nerdy. I'm just too white and nerdy.